We're at an inflection point in this country. Policing will never be the same. And the reality is that you can't have public safety without the public. My name is Akilah Shirelles, and I am the director of the Newark Community Street Team. The Newark Community Street Team is the city of Newark's community-based public safety initiative. We employ credible messengers, residents of the city of Newark, in a relationship-based strategy, address violence and crime um, in the city. You know, this past Saturday, the public execution of, of George Floyd, we had a huge protest in the city, and we were able to deploy our team in the field and, and be instrumental in ensuring that our city didn't go up in flames. We're outraged, but we don't need to destroy the city to, to, to show that we can actually create change because we're already engaged in the, uh, in the change that we want to see happen in, in our city. What happened to change things and what went into that? Because there were policy decisions. It wasn't just individual cops deciding to be nice today. That's right. It's about leadership. You know, um, we have the most progressive mayor in the country, you know, Mayor, mayor Rash J. Baraka, um, who is from this neighborhood, whose father um, was a part of that first rebellion in 1967 and was, and was beat. And when he took the helm in 2014, he organized the, the Safer Newark Council, um, which was a coordinated strategy of all of his public safety um, efforts in the city. So we've been working on this strategy since 2014. The newer community street team was formed um, by the mayor. We've been in conversation, um, you know, with, with our PD, um, you know, with other community-based organizations in partnership with the health department, because it's about making this whole idea of violence as a public health issue real. And so we're the people that we serve. And, and I think that um, we've done, you know, just an exceptional job in, in educating our people about public safety policy, um, about um, um, community-based violence reduction initiatives and, and, um, and, and victim services. You know, in 2019, um, you know, we had um, our lowest, you know, um, homicide rate and overall crime rate in the history of the city. Um, in the South Ward, where we're based and we target our work at, we had a negative 48% reductions in homicides. So the Movement for Black Lives is making some demands. Um, what are the ones that stand out to you and how do you relate to them? You know, the Movement for Black Lives um, is demanding that they defund police and, um, and, you know, move towards local control. Maybe we don't agree on the strategy on how it's done, but uh, just in concept, you know, I, I believe that's, that's true. I think that we're at an inflection point in terms of policing in this country and that, um, that we have to move towards a more shared safety um, framework as opposed to law enforcement being the single point of, of, of contact for, for, for public safety. I think that you know, what the Newark Community Street Team is doing, what the city of Newark is, um, is doing is exactly that. We're implementing a graduated process towards uh, more local control. When, when, um, when the mayor launched this work in 2014, um, standing next to me was, was the chief, was the public safety director, and the mayor told to our whole team, he said, if you guys can produce data showing that you have the capacity to reduce violence and crime in the city, I will move money from the police budget into yours. And this year, he put out an RFP um, for a community-based violence reduction initiative in February. We applied, we were awarded $250,000. Now, the thing is, is that that's not a tremendous amount of money right but it's a it's a it's a step in the right direction and with support from our our corporate partners and our and our foundation partners um you know we've been able to thrive as an organization and now we have the infrastructure in place to be able to actually produce the data you know with our partner at Rutgers to show that community-based intervention in the city of Newark actually works and not only that our law enforcement is like saying absolutely because they depend on us you know and in the interim I mean, we depend on law enforcement. We need them to respond to some of these um, high level, um, you know, violent situations and everything that we're gaining the capacity um, and the know-how to do. So it's a, it's, a, it's a partnership. And I think that um, it's a graduated process as opposed to an abrupt cut. What's your advice to people who live in different sorts of places? Maybe where the people in power aren't quite so uh, progressive. You have been talking about public health, a public health model. A, a trauma model. How do people begin to do that work in other places? And what can some of the demands be in places different from Newark? I think that some of what 
folks in other cities who might not have a progressive mayor or um, you know a, a, a law enforcement partner who who understands and, and sees community-based public safety as a viable strategy come to Newark you know sit down with us and let us show you you know um, let us show you our strategy and our process now we know that one size doesn't fit all um, every city has its unique challenges and, 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 and problems and stuff but I would say you know come and meet with our mayor and, and, and hear from him. Come and meet with the Newark Community Street Team and see our work in community and how it happens. Come and sit and talk with our public safety director to learn about how the consent decree has, has shaped the police's response, as well as um, our civilian review board, you know, that which is one of the few in the country that actually has teeth 